Hello, welcome to the Tom Fell Blacksmithing channel. Today we're talking all about how to build your own online shop and sell all your handmade products through your own business website. In this video, I'm gonna show you all about how to create your own e-commerce website, set that up from start to finish, and hopefully show you that it's a lot easier than you might think it is. Now, I've been selling my own products on my own website for nearly 10 years now, very successfully, and I want you to follow my guide to show how I've done it and how that can work for you. So if you're a blacksmith like me or a different kind of craftsperson and you want to sell your own products online through your own store, check out how I've done it, follow my guide, and you'll find out just how easy it is and you can get started on building your own. So to kick things off, I'm gonna use an analogy that compares an online shop to a physical shop on the high street. And there are five main things that you need to think about. The first is the domain name. The second is hosting. The third is your products. The fourth is your advertising. And the fifth is your traffic. Now, the first one, domain name, imagine that that's like the name of your shop, your brand, if you like. That's really straightforward. It doesn't get much more complicated than that. That's what people type in to get to your website like mine would be www.tomfell.com. Hopefully everybody kind of understands what a domain name is. I'll be talking about that in a little bit more detail, but just so you understand the connection to the analogy, your domain name is like your brand name or your shop's name. The second is your hosting. Now, it is both the physical location of your shop in the sense that that's where your files are kept, but it is also your physical shop, as in your decor and what your shop looks like and how your shop feels, or if there's any background music and how your shop is laid out, the positions of your products, uh, what information there is about you on your website. The next thing to consider is your products. Now, in a physical shop, your customers can walk in, they can pick it up, they can touch it, they can feel it, they can ask you loads of questions about it. The difference with a website is that they can't physically touch these things, so photos are really important. We're gonna talk about all of these things later in more detail, but the photos are the thing that's gonna sell your work. They're the thing that people see and the information that you provide around the photos is vital to how you go about selling your work. You need to tread a really fine line with your photos. You need to get them professional looking, but not soulless. Advertising, advertising is advertising, whether it's a physical shop or online. It's a hugely complicated conversation. It's probably for another video. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to get people to your shop uh, but advertising is, a, is an extra layer to that, possibly further down the line, once you get your head around all of these initial factors. And last but certainly not least is traffic. So traffic is the online lingo to talk about basically how many people are coming into your shop, how many people off the street are walking in and browsing your shop. They might not all buy, they might be really happy, they might be pick up and put down and go away people, but traffic is the term that online nerds like me use to describe people coming into your shop. And that is the hardest aspect of building a shop. Building it is easy, domain name hosting, building your site is now really easy. Taking photos is slightly difficult. Coming up with the content is, ha is hard. Traffic is the thing that's going to stop or start your shop. And we're going to talk a lot about that in the video. So what are the main things you need to think about? The one main thing you need to think about is how people find you. Normally in a shop, you've got a great location, you'll pay for the great location. Obviously it's more expensive to be in a really great place like, I don't know, Covent Garden or King's Cross Mayfair, whatever, I don't shop very much. The location is the thing that often helps these places and you don't necessarily have that luxury. So what you need to think about is how people are gonna find you. You need customers and you need customers to come in and browse and accept that most of those customers are never going to buy. You generally need to think about one to 2% of all the people that come to visit your website are gonna buy something, okay? That's called a conversion rate. So you need a huge volume of people to come and see your stuff in order for some of them to buy. 
So it's all about traffic. And how do you get traffic? Well, the main way you get traffic is by searching for you. Searching online on whatever aspect of online that is, they need to search for you. But that's not you as in your name. They're not searching for you because they don't know who you are. And your customers, they have no idea what you're called. They have no idea what your name is. They have no idea what your website is. They have no idea that you exist, unfortunately. So you need to be searchable and you need to understand that it's not about you. It's not about your name. It's about your products and what your products are called and how relevant your products are to what their needs are. They will search for products. They will largely on the whole look at one single product page. They might look around at various other related products, but they're just going to look at that product page. If you're lucky, they take a big, long, deep dive all through your website, look through all the stuff. Some people want to know who they're buying off. So it's really important to have those messages there. You're handmade, you're high quality, you're professional, you know what you're doing. So they'll look through it often, but not always. Most of the people buying know what they want. They'll find your product online and then they'll buy it. So searching for you is irrelevant. Searching for your products is the thing that you need to consider. So that's why titles and descriptions and photos are so key to all of this. Now, just like on a high street, prime retail spots, prime locations get you an immediate amount of traffic of customers walking through the door. If you're tucked around the corner, off the beaten track, no one's coming into your store unless they know about you. Whereas if you're on the main high street, they're all coming in and they're all looking around whether they want to buy or not. So that's high volume but perhaps less valuable customers because they're possibly less interested in buying more about browsing. So one place that's very popular with craftspeople, particularly starting out trying to sell online, is Etsy. And what Etsy does have are customers. It already has that traffic and they are considered to be quite valuable traffic, valuable customers, because they are already in the mindset that they want to buy handmade product. And they are also in the mindset that they are wanting to buy because not everybody that looks at your website is going to be ever interested in wanting to buy. But with Etsy, you have access to a relatively valuable set of customers who are already prepared to buy and they are already prepared to expect to see handmade items. So we're going to talk a bit about Etsy and the pros and the cons of selling via that in a bit more of a deep dive. So if an online shop is like a physical shop, Etsy is like having a market stall in a shopping centre or a shopping mall. Uh, they are full of traffic, full of customers, full of browsers, but they're really expensive. You are in a mall which has overheads. You are expected to pay those costs. You have the privilege of being in Etsy and it is expensive and they charge you for it. They advertise that they charge 6.5%. If you Google Etsy transaction fee, they will show you that it's 6.5%. In reality, it is 6.5%, but it's also all manner of other charges on top of it. So let's take a look at an example. This is a list of all the transactions involved when somebody makes a purchase from an Etsy store. This is a candlestick that I sold from Etsy when I had an Etsy store. And these are all the involved transactions. And I want to go through them to show you what's involved. So down near the bottom, there's the actual transaction that somebody's purchased a candlestick off me. That's £99.99. .99, so it's a nice round number, close to £100. Might mean everything is a bit more easier to work out. Below it, there are two different transactions, but they're all part of the same sale of that candlestick. So the first one is the listing fee. You pay that every time you make a sale. It's a small amount. It's 16 pence for this item. Second is the VAT that you pay on that listing fee. Now again, that's even smaller than that listing fee at three pence, but those two are still part of the same first transaction. Now above that transaction, you'll see the processing fee. Now that's 4%. That's what Etsy charge you for actually processing the transaction. 
Now, you'll get that with all companies like PayPal, or if you use the inbuilt versions on the website builders that you end up using, you will end up having to pay a transaction fee. That's 4% for this one. This is quite competitive, but nevertheless, that ends up being £4.20 that you're paying in fees. The next is the transaction fee. Now, that's the 6.5% that Etsy will advertise that they charge you. So that's where that is. And that 6.5% is £6.50 on this transaction. Next, you have a regulatory operating fee. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to what that is. That is a percentage. That's 0.32%. And that works out at 32 pence. Above that, you've got VAT on the transaction. Now, it's not listed here, but I imagine that's 20% as it is in the UK. And that works out at £1.30 for this transaction. You then can see the VAT on the regulatory operating fee. Again, probably 20%. So that's a tiny amount of six pence. Next up, you've got VAT on the processing fee. That's VAT on the fact that they've processed that payment. And again, that's a percentage of that processing fee. And for this one, that's 84 pence. Now at the top, you can see the withdraw. That's the money that actually ends up coming to me. And that for this transaction is 86 pounds and 58 pence. And that is a reduction from the original listing price of £99.99 of over 13%. That's a lot higher than the 6.5% that Etsy advertise. But nevertheless, that is all charged on all of my transactions. Now, that's not just a headache financially. It's also a headache when you come to do your tax return because you're going to need to list all of these transactions because these are all your expenses and if you're considering doing every single transaction within this one sale and multiplying it by the number of sales you're hopefully making through Etsy at some point that becomes a bit of a headache especially if you don't have an accountant whatever you think about that percentage it is over twice what Etsy will happily advertise what they charge for and I don't think that's too transparent on their part you also need to consider that something that you might think you're selling for a hundred pounds you're actually getting over 13 percent less than and ending up pocketing only 86 pounds now, all of them, Etsy will say, are valid charges, and I don't dispute that at all. And apart from the processing fee that you're going to end up having to pay for PayPal or whoever you use if you go in your own website, all the rest of it are simply charges that Etsy want to charge you. They are unique to Etsy or any selling platform. You wouldn't need to pay any of these other charges if you're just selling through your own website. Don't forget also that a lot of these are percentages. So while £4.20 on a processing fee might not sound a lot, if your products are more expensive than mine, I sell more expensive products than this one, that is a percentage of your sale and therefore you're going to end up being charged more. Same percentage, but more money. At the end of the day, you are getting charged over 13% for using Etsy. Also, what you need to consider is that this transaction wasn't a result of it being advertised. If this transaction was the result of somebody clicking on a link that Etsy had advertised on my behalf via Google, for instance, or even via their own internal website, they would also add an additional percentage to cover the cost of the advertising that they've paid to get that product in front of somebody else on your behalf. And as soon as that happens, that 13 and a bit percentage goes even higher. Suddenly your costs go even higher. Suddenly that 86 pounds gets reduced even further. If you're earning under a certain threshold through Etsy, you can choose to opt out. But if you get big enough with Etsy, if you start selling a lot over the course of a year, you cannot opt out of that. And any time a transaction of yours is the result of advertising that they've done on your behalf, they will stick that percentage on on top of all of these other charges and your profits and your withdrawal from the money that you get paid for the product goes down even further. You really need to consider whether this is going to be ending up financially viable for you to do. So now that you have a bit more transparency, you're still thinking maybe I should go with Etsy. So how does it work? You would register with Etsy. You add all of your products, all of your photos, all of your descriptions. The look that your shop has is very fixed. Etsy wants it to look like an Etsy shop. You are within Etsy. You won't have your own domain name. They advertise on Google. So if people are searching for products and Google determine that your product is relevant to that search, they could show you a result from your Etsy shop. So that's great. 
The downsides are it looks like it looks, you can't control that. It's exactly the same as everybody else's shop. It's just that your products are different. They do offer a decent amount of traffic, a very sympathetic audience, a very valuable audience, but they do charge you for it. Now, some people say, oh, that's okay. They charge me for it, but I'll just put my prices up. And that's fine. You can put your prices up. You can do whatever you like. It's your business. It's part of the benefit of owning your own business and choosing how and what you sell where. Depending on what you sell, the problem might be that you are in a market. So for example, if you sell shelf brackets, there is a certain amount of money that the public are prepared to spend on shelf brackets. Now that's a range, it might be a big range, it might be a small range, depending on what it is you're selling. But at the end of the day, the market decides how much they're prepared to pay for your products. If you put your prices up by even a fraction outside of that range, that very arbitrary, hard to pin down range, suddenly you're not going to sell nearly enough of those products to make it worth your while. And ultimately, you're not going to be in control because you feel like you're having to put your prices up in order to take any of the profit back. Another downside with Etsy is that if you get big enough and you start making loads and loads of sales through Etsy, they will automatically start advertising on your behalf. You can't opt out of it. And if those advertisements lead to a sale, then they pass that cost on to you. There's no question. You also need to consider the fact that you are a customer of Etsy, but you as an Etsy customer also have customers. So Etsy are slightly conflicted. Are they putting their emphasis behind protecting you? Are they looking after you as the seller, as their customer? Or are they looking after your customer, who is also their customer? And 99% of the time, that works for everybody. But the 1% of the time when it doesn't, and there's some confliction or there's some issue, it is up to Etsy what gets resolved and how. It is not up to you. You are no longer in control of the situation. And when you're trying to make a living and these profit margins are so small, every sale is important and every dispute that you may or may not have with customers inevitably will come along. You are not the one making the decisions. You are ultimately not in control of being able to protect yourself as your own business. Okay, so Etsy might work for you. Etsy might not. It might be a great starting point to get you into the mindset of selling online. Uh, it would certainly give you an excuse to take some really great photos and think of some really interesting dynamic content, how to describe those products. Uh, and it could really get the ball rolling. But it might be more sensible. It might be easier than you think to start your own. Now, you might think, well, I don't know anything about computers. It seems very alien. It sounds a lot scarier than it is. It's definitely a lot easier than it sounds. So that's the end of part one. We've talked a lot about how the online shop is very similar to a physical shop to try and get your head into that sort of mode a bit more. We've talked a lot about Etsy and what the pros and the cons are. So hopefully I've convinced you that starting your own shop is something that you want to do. The next part of this video is going to show you exactly how to do that. So stay with us and make sure to check out part two of this series of how to build an online shop. As ever, if you've got any questions, any comments, please leave a comment. I'm really keen to get back to anybody that leaves comments. I'm really keen to engage. I want these videos to be helpful. So by all means, get in touch.